This episode of Shadowversity is brought to you by my stupendous, awesome, legendary supporters on Patreon. If you'd like to support Shadowversity on Patreon, visit patreon.com forward slash Shadowversity. Shadowversity. Greetings, I'm Shad, and welcome to the tour and design breakdown of Castle Vanberg, the castle I've designed using the Conan Exiles build system. Now, I've also uploaded a video showcasing me building Castle Vanberg in single player, which was also the first time I tried to make this design in the game. So that video is up and available, please do go watch it, you'll really enjoy it. And in fact, I was so happy with the result that me and my clanmates have remade Castle Vanberg Vanberg in multiplayer online, which you see right here. Now, of course, it's in a different location to the one I built in single player because you need to find a good location that hasn't been claimed, but also is near good resources, but also is secure. There's a lot of things to kind of consider, and the design is slightly different, and I kind of like the multiplayer version a little bit better, so it is the multiplayer version that I will be giving us a tour through and explaining the design. I've already mentioned several times that I'm having huge amounts of fun with the build system in Conan Exiles, and I want to address that just briefly, why I think the build system is working so well. Other people have mentioned that uh, Conan Exiles build system isn't actually unique. Other games have utilized this very simplistic but effective method of squares and triangles like Rust. So credit to them as well if they're using this elegant kind of solution, because I mentioned this in my previous Conan Castle build episode, that the other building systems that I've used in other games have uh, run into significant limitations when it comes to circles. And this build system, which utilizes equal sided triangles with faces of the same distance as the square blocks, answers that problem quite elegantly, which creates a build system which is like a fun puzzle. And I enjoy puzzles, and it's created this system where it feels like you can mostly achieve the design that you want if you explore the different ways these triangles and squares can fit together. And therefore this puzzle kind of component to the build system has actually been increasing the enjoyment that I've been having in it, so much so that I've actually been going into SketchUp, which is a, a free 3D modeling program, and just made the same, you know, triangles and squares, and pre-plan out designs to see which ways they can be fitted together to create the designs that you want. And yeah, I might have been getting a little carried away. But this is the puzzle component that I have been enjoying. And so in comparison to this, a build system that I feel is broken and just too limited for me to fully sink my teeth into are ones in which you can't either achieve the design that you want or achieve a design close to the design that you want. And that's really been my problem with, say, Medieval Engineers so far. I kind of always harken back to it. There's some really good things medieval engineers but the fact that you're limited to two circle sizes is a big problem because when it comes to castles that are built out of stone circular structures are very prominent and important unlike timber because trees grow in generally straight lines that you may then make timber planks in straight lines which restricts the type of buildings you can make out of timber to very strict geometrical kind of angles, squares, rectangles, and the like. But with stone, it's much easier to build a circular thing out of stone as it is to build a square building out of stone. There's not really nearly as much of a limitation. And so to get a really cool kind of sophisticated inventive castle design, incorporating circles is not only aesthetically pleasing, but also defensively important because a round tower is much more likely to deflect bombardments, you know, big rocks that are thrown at it, than just taking all that force on a flat surface, which a square structure is much more likely to do. And then this brings us back to the Conan Exiles and other games uh, answer to this. The squares and triangles enables you to incorporate infinite size circles in your design. And look at the many different kind of combinations that I've been able to put together. Now, there are limitations, like you can't put a perfect kind of circular thing on a corner as easily as if the triangle was a right angled triangle but you can do it, you just need to incorporate the triangles into the center square portion of the layout. And so you can get a castle with four round cornered towers. And so I didn't want to be limited with just 
a four round tower thing, I wanted to go all the way. And so I played with many different designs, looking at many different kind of circles, and this was the layout that I eventually came up with. And it really felt like I had solved a puzzle, because look at the complexity of the layout that I needed to develop to make this castle layout. But the thing is, even though it, if it is complex, it was intuitive enough for me to put together. You have a central circle that is flanked with smaller size circles on each end, and then a longer kind of entry section at the front. But then, to make it more sophisticated in its appearance, you can alternate the sizes of these towers, as you see when I take this design and bring it into 3D, and voila! This is the design for the castle that I wanted. And so now I'll explain the thought processes that went through my mind in taking this design and implementing it into the game, because I wanted to do justice to two important principles. The first in principle is historic castle design, because when I make a castle, I just don't want to make a good looking castle, I want to make a castle that obeys as much as is possible within the game's limitations, effective, authentic, historical castle design, but the next main thought process that I wanted to adhere to was make this castle effective within the game's mechanics because one of the fun things about kind of building a castle is trying to make a castle that can withstand well what they're called raids in the game characters and other players literally attacking your castle so now let's go closer into Castle Vanberg and I'll show you what I did in the design to help enable this castle to be very effective and fortified both historically and within the game's mechanics. One of the primary things to consider, of course, is location, as I mentioned in my other Conan episode, and so me and one of my clanmates, Oz, scouted the lands for a very good place for a base. Now you'll notice that this castle isn't placed at the top of a mountain, it's actually halfway up, and that is again because you have to balance convenience and effective location. And there was a flat just sticking out of the side of the mountain right where the castle is sitting right now, which was just a perfect build location to put a castle on. Heaps of surface area meant lots of room to place the castle and its walls, and also to place other things like our vault and thralls. We also didn't want to block off certain spawn points for creatures and animals, and there's like a dragon right at the top of this mountain, so we didn't want to affect that. And we needed size, because this was a big castle, and so we couldn't actually put it at the very, very top of a mountain plateau, like the top of the mountain that we see just up here to our right. Not enough surface area to fit the castle footprint, and so the place we found here was perfect for it. And the other advantage of this is that it actually isn't on the way to really anything. And so it gets very little traffic from other players, which actually is a good thing. One of the most secure ways you can build a base is build it in a place where no one else can find it, because a way to, you know, protect yourself in this game is just have other players not find your base at all. Because once they find it, and they see that this is a big base, it's gonna have a lot of resources in, well, there's a good chance that a player will go and raid it. Like, we had a previous base in multiplayer that got absolutely leveled and Every single thing we collected in it was just stolen and the base was destroyed. So when we were making this one, we wanted to fix the problems that existed on the previous base and make one proper. There are three tiers in the build sets in Conan Exiles, and of course, the uh, tier that we built this castle out of, tier 3, the highest, which means each kind of block of the building has the highest hit points. And out of those blocks, the block with the highest hit points are foundations. Now there are ways that you can combine other kind of blocks, like barrier foundations and other things like that, but in balance of resources that you need with hit points that you get out of the blocks, foundations work really well, and you can build faster with them. You are able to build more of your base quicker with foundations than if you were building them out of fence foundations. And so what we've done here is that every outwards facing surface of the castle is actually built out of castle foundations, stacked up to make a really solid wall. And that's what we also did on the lower levels of the main castle body. So what you'll see here, the lower three blocks here are foundations, and then as soon as you cross this line here, these are simple walls. Now, honestly, these walls aren't thick enough for a pop proper castle, uh, but for uh, balancing the resource that you can build with in the game, 
Well, it would have taken too long to build the whole thing out of foundations. I'm tempted to do that. I would like to build a castle as big as this with wall thickness, the thickness of the foundations, which equates to like two meters if you were to bring it into the real world. And two meter thick castle walls, that'll do. You just can't really have windows. So if someone is trying to assail this castle, they will have a much better time trying to destroy these upper walls than going through the foundations as possible, but it would take forever, like really, it'll take so long. Unless they use explosives, and there are explosives in the game, they're very hard to make, but once they got them, yes, even explosives will blast through foundations. So, you do what you can. Even if they are able to knock down one of these upper walls, they have to climb into the hole that they've made. And so if I switch to the character that you see, you'll notice these spiky bits lining the wall. So these are called spiked barriers. What's great about the spiked barriers is that you can build them onto the face of foundations. You can't build them onto the face of the walls. And so I've lined the bottom areas that are built out of foundations with these spiked barriers. And so this is what happens when you try and climb past them. You can't. Okay, you see how the spike barriers keep- what's actually happening is my character is taking damage. And as soon as you take damage in the game, you lose your grip on whatever you're climbing from and you fall. And so if a thrall is shooting at you as well, you will then lose your grip and fall. And so what we have is we have these kind of positions, archer positions here. So even if I try and climb underneath this turret here, I can't actually climb past this section because Though, even though I can kind of stop here and stand here, if I try and climb back on the wall, I take damage and I fall and I just can't get up. And so this is me trying to fortify a castle in the realms of the game's own mechanics. If we were to bring it into the real world, there would be a problem with, you know, landslides and uh, trebuchets from this big mountain behind me, so that would be a significant weakness. But in terms of the game, even if they were able to knock a hole through one of these upper walls, they can't climb past the foundations, because if you look along the line here, you've got spike barrier there, there, and then these spikes kind of come up in a diagonal line right up to the top of these spiked barriers at the top of the wall. And then the spike barriers encircle the entire wall and the entire wall is made out of foundations except for the doors. So if you wanted to bust through these walls within the game, the, the part of the castle that has the lowest hit points for you to try and get through would be this big gate here. You need to try and knock down this door. And you'll be doing it while under fire from all their thralls that we have here, and we're still equipping them with armor and, you know, arrows and stuff. But there are thralls up on the wall as well, able to shoot down on anyone trying to bust through. And then even if they get through this door, well, we have a surprise waiting for them. Heaps of thralls as well. And just to kind of show you uh, how many defenders we plan to put on this castle, let's take a look in our vaults. So we got our bows there, and, got, and yeah, we, we, we have a couple of thralls. If people are wondering why these thralls just say thralls and they don't have the symbol like other ones, the, these are special thralls. They're devotee thralls, which only have the thrall word for their symbol in the inventory. But yeah, we, you know, we, we, we're getting there. We're getting there. We have an outpost where these devotee thralls spawn and they're really easy to convert it with our setup so we can just farm them to the days. And so behind our great wall we have the main keep. And as you see here the keep is lined on the foundation levels with spiked barriers. We've got thralls blocking the inside and of course we have our vault. Vaults are insanely difficult to bust open and so it's quite secure there. You know, if people could get close enough, with enough time they could get through, but that's if they can, you know, withstand the attack of the thralls on all the defended sections of the battlements. Because that's the thing, to get into this castle, they could try and bust a hole through the back, like I mentioned before, but they can't climb past those spike barriers unless they actually destroy those foundations themselves, which will take forever unless they use explosives. But this is where we come to an advantage in castle design, having it segmented on the inside into other rooms blocked off by doors. Because even if they bust through, they gotta then get through the doors blocking off the castle. Because if you have a look at the grid design, these are the wall sections of the castle, and every single room is blocked off by a fortified door, which are in themselves really difficult to get through. And we have our most 
valuable resources right at the dead center at the very bottom of this castle behind all those doors and foundations and you will have to bust through so many things to get into so it's fairly secure i'm not saying it's impossible to get into but it's a pretty well fortified castle within the game's mechanics and if they wanted to get through these outer walls and they get into the bailey they have to kill all the thralls and then they got to get through this door here. Now you'll notice that the uh, stairs to this door are orange. This is because these stairs are actually made out of the weakest tier build set, sandstone. And so if they want to use fire orbs to destroy the door, the door has more hit points than the stairs. And so the stairs are going to be destroyed before they destroy the door. And if you have a look what's underneath this door right here, it's actually a spiked barrier. And so even if they are able to knock down the door and there's a wide opening for them to get in, they can't climb up because there's a spiked barrier blocking them and they'll take damage and fall so they won't actually be able to climb into the door even if they block it open. I was kind of, you know, proud of that little design feature that I added there. And there's a woolly mammoth head because it looks cool. We'll replace it with a dragon someday. Dragon heads are even bigger though, gosh. So if you get through this door, guess what you enter into here? It is a kill zone, that's right. With spiked barriers lining the walls, and yes, there are thrall arches up there as well. And so the easiest place to bust through, aside from, you know, getting through the foundation cells, which will take far, far longer, so the easiest place to knock through the door, even though they were able to get through the barrier, because spiked barriers has left has less hit points than the foundations themselves, they then fall into this kill zone. And again, even though this is tier 2 stairs, tier 2 stairs are weaker than the door here. And so they have to get through the door. Now they could kind of bust through this wall here because this is a weaker wall. I couldn't put a foundation block there because there wouldn't be enough room for what you see behind there. You see, there's a wheel of pain for converting thralls to our servants right behind. So they could bust through there, but then that room is blocked off by doors as well. And so they have bust through not only doors but foundations, but I'll show you that room as we go through to the next room. The main entry hall of the castle. So look at this, flanked by big stairs on either side, a big kind of feast cooking pit for people to eat and there will be you know chairs and whatnot and then we have room doors leading to all the rooms aside so right here access to the internal kind of kill zone battlement and then we of course have doors leading to the our, the individual clan members bedroom each clan member has claimed a room and furnished it with uh, whatever they like and so this is my room here you know it's a bit simple i could put some trophies along the wall i got a nice fireplace so that's this room here and i'll show you oz's room oz's room <laughs> well yeah you 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 You'll, you'll get an idea of Oz's room right there. He has furnished it. And he's you know, got, got some uh, trophies hanging on the walls, carpets and stuff. But it's cool that you can furnish the rooms the way that you want. So if we go up, this is kind of a transitory hall. Access to the upper battlement right here. And we have a fully upgraded altar. It is an altar to Set. I don't really like Set, but he gives some really cool items. You can make poison arrows with Set. And so even if our thralls can't shoot poison arrows by default, we've upgraded it to make them so we can give all our thralls poison arrows and ensure they have them, and also so we can use them ourselves. And then, of course, we have stairs leading up to another archery positions on these side turrets at the front of the castle. And if you were to go through these doors to the rooms, another door here, and open up, you'll see an archery platform. So another battlement here, and I know, I wish I could have, you know what I'm gonna say, MASHICULATIONS! But as of yet, there is no provision in the build system to add the glorious, you know, elements of castles that we know we want. And just to point out, there are two types of spike barriers. So what we see here is called a crenellated barrier. And you kind of see what it looks like there. It's not really proper crenellations, but it's actually a space in between. So if I was to put a thrall where I'm standing right here, it's so that they can actually shoot past the barriers because the barriers, the regular ones that we see right there, separate to the crenellated ones, can actually, you know, block some of the thralls' arrow fire. So having these crenellated ones, a gap, ensures that the thralls' arrow fire will go through at the enemies. And so every place where it's important, like particularly important to have a thrall, like the, you know, external towers and the turrets or bastions, they have those open spike barriers there for them. And so this is missing a door. I'll put a door here because when you have put all the doors on 
on where they're supposed to be. Even if enemies were able to bust through and get into this section, well, then they need to bust through these doors as well. And the doors do have decent amount of hit points, as well as just these thin walls as well. So if we go up, this is going to be the throne room. We haven't furnished it yet, but the main throne room. And you can see where the throne is going to sit. This is for our glorious leader, Damocles. Shout out to you, mate. And then we have more battlements right here to place archers and fire anyone down who gets stuck in the bailey or trying to assault the outer walls and so you'll see that each of these towers are staggered onto different heights which just gives a nice kind of variance and flavor to the castle's design which looks good so this is one of the other characters rooms he's claimed the biggest room in the room this is kane's room one of the other members of our clan and of course battlements here as well and you have the main tower top as well so if we go up to the next level we are now kind of in the main tower stairwell because out this door here we have uh, one of the largest upper platforms right here for the castle and we're thinking about putting a tribuche here to shoot counter fire to anyone who is able to maybe destroy one of our outposts off there and then start shooting at our castle we can then shoot at them back with our own trebuchet which will fit perfectly right here and then of course right at the very top of the castle we've got two balconies which are also well they're not crenellated but i got battlements and i can replace them with the crenellated barriers and put arches here as well and so look at the view and maybe we can climb right up to the top and take a look from the very top of the castle because it's cool and if you're wondering what that shiny light is, that is from our fully upgraded altar, because when we put a good priest in, you can actually get a defensive kind of magical shield around your whole base, which also protects you from tribuchet fire as well. So that just adds an additional layer of defense for our castle. So we just need a, you know, I think we need a priest there. But one of the other clan mates are working on it to make a fully indestructible unraidable castle in conan exiles even in a full-on you know multiplayer hardcore server like this one where raiding just happens everywhere it is a bit dangerous me making this video because if anyone who watches this video who actually plays on this server they're gonna find out all the ins and outs of our base and it, they might see it as a challenge to just try and raid it because here i am saying it's so great and they want to put it to the test and then we're just gonna get totally thrashed by a couple you know uh, an ally like a massive raid with 20 or 40 players all against us if they know where we are they probably could figure it out but i wonder you know there's not too many telltales as well of course it's in the snow there's a giveaway but where in the snow this is one of our clan mates bomb room in fact because you stay in the game when you log out that's little eyes uh, avatar right there and uh he's unconscious but this is his bomb making room we're making bombs right because because uh, you can destroy things with bombs oil things or trebuchets and so going down into the lower more secure rooms because if you open this door here you see underneath this all right so all the walls here are ringed with foundations so you've got the thin walls here but underneath this level it's all foundations and this is where yes the wheel of pain is so we actually have a wheel of pain this is a level two wheel of pain level three is just too big uh, but there's a level two wheel of pain inside our base and of course it's fully ringed with foundations very very secure and we have have kind of vaulted rooms right here not vaulted ceilings but we call them the vaults this is in the vault even though it's not a real vault in the game you know that you can build but anyway it's the vaults the, the vault level sections and stuff and there is actually a way to go further down but i'm not going to show you that because that's too much of a, a reveal i don't want people raiding us to figure out how to go lower to where all our good stuff is so that, that that's hidden but deep in the bowels of castle of unburg we have all uh, well basically it's our treasury really full of all our gear and our high tier thralls working at our important work benches all here and this is just inviting people to raid us don't do it jerks and there we go this has been the tour of castle of Vandenberg, as well as a breakdown of my thought processes in its design a big shout out to my clan mates who without them i would not have been able to build it because this is multiplayer online okay so we had to collect all these resources in game we just couldn't spawn them in through the admin controls like you can in single player no we collected all the resources and built it by digital hand ourselves so shout out to my clan mates and thank you for watching guys i do hope you've enjoyed and of course i hope to see you again if you want to see the speed build video of this car 
Castle Design, do go check it out. It is available here and in the description below. Hope to see you there, and until that time, farewell.